So we're talking about connections. Uh, as Lydia said, that's kind of the, um, the work camp logo this year, the, um, let's see, it's, it's education, connection, and inspiration are sort of the themes. Um, in 1986, my family relocated from Arlington, Texas, down to Houston. Um, it was the summer between, I just came out of fifth grade and was getting ready to go into sixth grade. That's my little nerdy self over there. And that was my first time to ever be in a new city. <clears throat> no friends, didn't know anybody. Uh, and then there's that dreaded first day of school, right? Uh, you go into school, you're not sure um, what to expect, you're not sure if kids are gonna be mean, if they're gonna be nice. Uh, how many of you have ever, ever had that experience, being a new kid, but, okay, pretty much everybody, uh, or a significant portion of the room. So, so you feel my pain. Um, so it, I got there and actually everything went fairly smoothly until lunchtime. And then there's the, uh, the terror of who are you gonna sit with? Uh, would I sit by myself? If I did find somebody to sit with, would they make fun of the love note that my mom had put in my sack lunch or, or maybe my weird sandwich that kids from Arlington uh, eat? But thankfully, this girl, Deanne Byers, <coughs> She asked me to sit with her and her friends. Uh, and such an insignificant little gesture to her, but I'm still talking about it 30 years later, so um, it meant something to me. So for at least that next little half hour or so, uh, I could relax a little bit, um, I had a place to belong and some friends <coughs> that I could connect with. Now I found out later that Mrs. Wallace, the sixth grade teacher, had pulled Deanne aside <laughs> before lunch and asked her to ask me to sit with her. So it wasn't that Deanne thought it was cool, it was the teacher made her do it. Uh, but I, I appreciated it nonetheless. So here we are uh, at Work Camp Asheville and we have the opportunity uh, to maybe help someone else that is feeling uh, like that kid on, on the first day of school. Um, maybe you are feeling like that kid on the first day of school. Uh, so as we, as we kick off the day together and get ready to, to do some really fun things, I would like to encourage you uh, to make some connections. And I'm gonna share uh, some specific ways and opportunities you'll have to make some connections, uh, as well as share some stories of my own connections that I've made at work camps. And thank you to Mendel, by the way, for the coffee. What is this, two shots on ice with one more sugar? It's perfect. <laughs> Not 13. Okay. Um, so every relationship, every opportunity, somewhere comes back to a connection. So think about the job you have right now, whether you are self-employed or whether uh, you work for the man. Um, you got that job or you got that client uh, through a connection and somewhere that opportunity uh, came about from some relationship that you had formed somewhere. So we're tracing all the way back to that thread, that first, that first connection. Um, now, before we get going, I wanna uh, tell you about my friend, Alicia. Um, she has a swimming pool, and that's not the only reason I'm friends with her, but it is a big draw. Uh, and I love going over and, uh, and swimming with her kids. She has a four-year-old son and a, a six-year-old daughter. That's not either of them, by the way, because that would be creepy if I was putting her kid up there. But um, anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I hate it when people cough into microphones, and I just did it. Um, so we, we go over and we play, and, and one of the more popular games is uh, Uber, where I ferry the kids across the pool on my back. Um, and I, I charge surge pricing if they want to go to deep end. Um, and then the other, the other game we love to play is the diving board competition. Nobody's actually diving because <clears throat> they're too little to know how to dive, but we do some cool jumps. And the way the diving board competition works is there's the peanut gallery and then there's the person jumping. And whoever's in the peanut gallery gets to shout out what kind of jump uh, the person on the board has to do. So there's the frog, which is like all your limbs out and you end up kind of belly flopping. There's the, the the catch where you run and you jump and somebody throws a ball at you and you try to catch it when you're uh, jumping. There's the pencil where you try to make yourself the smallest profile possible. 
uh, for the minimum splash when you go in. And then, of course, there's beloved Cannonball, uh, where the opportunity to make the biggest splash uh, and bonus points if you get water into Mom's drink. Um, so why am I telling you about swimming with, uh, swimming with these kids? Um, I wanted to, to I, don't, I, I liked the visual in my mind for uh, pencils and cannonballs. Because so we're talking about connections. Um, connections don't have to be this huge cannonball experience where you're sharing your life story and there's Kleenexes at the end of it. Um, now a connection can look like that, but probably for us here at WordCamp today, that's not what our connections are gonna look like. We're gonna have a lot of pencil connections. We're just making small connections. We're introducing ourselves. Uh, we're sharing just a little bit of our story. Um, and I wanna talk about four, uh, those four opportunities that you'll have uh, to make some of these pencil connections that later on might lead to cannonball connections. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Um, so the first one, during a session. So here's how it's gonna go. When we wrap up this time together, um, you're gonna take a moment to study that schedule that you got, and it's got four tracks, a ton uh, of awesome information, and you're gonna wonder, where do I go? I can't teleport myself, or what's the word where you are multiple places at once? Whatever, you, I can't do that. So I've gotta pick which session I'm going, <laughs> what was it? Oh. Omnipresent, thank you. We are not the Lord. We cannot do that. Uh, so we have to pick which session we are going to attend. Uh, and then you'll find your room, you'll look around, uh, you'll find a seat um, that doesn't look too scary to sit in. You'll look at your watch and you'll have about five minutes before your session starts. And what better to do with five minutes than check your email or get in a couple games of words with friends, all right? <laughs> but. My challenge to you today, I'm Mrs. Wallace, pulling you aside, if that's not too creepy to imagine, uh, and asking you to not retreat into your device. I'm guilty of it as well, uh, but don't use your device as an excuse to not connect with someone around you. Um, I know you'll need to check your email today. I know you'll need to play some words with friends. You've got rounds, people are nudging you. Uh, but, <laughs> Just for at least once, resist the urge, uh, put down the device, and simply turn to someone around you and introduce yourself. And that's a, that's a pencil connection, it's not much. It takes 30 seconds. Uh, also during a session, there's Q&A. So either at the end of the session, or some, some speakers will uh, take questions during, uh, during the session, but ask questions. Like, we're techies here, we're nerds, there's gonna be a lot of uh, acronyms and uh, phrases flying around, and if something passes over your head, uh, ask. That's what we're here. We're here to educate today, uh, to connect and inspire. Um, so definitely uh, ask questions if you have them. And then finally, at the end of the session, this is going to sound like I'm setting you up, but I'm really not. Uh, at the end of the session, if you enjoyed it, uh, go up to the speaker and shake their hand and introduce to yourself. Um, that is a connection. Um, and for people like me, it's, it's very nerve-wracking to get up and, and speak in front of people. So uh, that, that lets the speakers know that, hey, somebody, somebody got something out of it. Uh, somebody appreciated it. So anyways, again, that was not a troll for, <laughs> it, it, for, <laughs> for this. Um, but that was an opportunity uh, to, to, to make a connection. Um, OK, so interact. Connection is really just a fancy word for interacting. Uh, okay, so after all these morning sessions, we're gonna come back to that cafeteria. Um, some volunteer is gonna lovingly hand you a sack lunch uh, and you're gonna have to go find a place to sit. Um, in August, or no, April of 2013, uh, I went to WordCamp Austin and that was my first ever WordCamp to attend. Uh, and there's this lady named Andrea Middleton um, she works for she works for Automatic and is on their community team. Uh, anyhow, I had interacted with her quite a bit online, but I never had the chance to meet her in person. So she was also at WordCamp Austin, and I made a point over lunch to uh, find her and just plop down myself at her table. And we we had uh, pencil level connections, no big deal, just talking about WordCamps, talking about you know what was going on. Um, 
And that was the beginning of a connection uh, that led to, eventually led to an opportunity uh, that, was, that was very cool, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later. But, uh, or no, I'll tell you a little bit about it now, because why not, right? So uh, a couple of months after WordCamp, she, uh, she DM'd me and said, hey, did you know that WordCamp San Francisco speaker, uh, uh, they're accepting speaker apps. You should throw your hat in the ring. And I was like, mm. for those of if you, if, you uh, if this is your first WordCamp or you haven't been around the WordPress community long, WordCamp San Francisco uh, is historically kind of the grand poobah of WordCamps. It's, uh, Automatic is headquartered in San Francisco. Matt Mullenweg uh, spends quite a bit of time out there. Uh, and actually this year they're, they're going to be in, in Philly. That was a non sequitur for your information. But, uh, so it's, it's, it's huge. Everybody comes out to this WordCamp. And the idea of turning in a speaker application, uh, it would have never crossed my mind. Um, there's no way that I would have had the, uh, the courage <clears throat> to do that. Uh, had Andrea not given me that little bit of a nudge. Um, and so I did end up going out to work in San Francisco. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. <clears throat> but lunch is a great time to make a connection. People are happy, they're eating. Uh, we all feel a little bit relaxed and got a little food in our belly. Um, so take advantage um, to meet someone new um, and make that pencil connection. Or uh, if you're here to visit your buddies, uh, then, then go, go cannonball style on that. Um, and here's the deal. Now, you may think, I might accidentally sit by a weirdo. Now, I know there are no weirdos in this room, but on the off chance one slips into the cafeteria and you end up sitting next to them at lunch, just remember, you don't have to marry them. It's just 20 minutes, okay? So, yeah, it's, it's going to be all right. You know, I've, I've, you know what? I've never seen a proposal at a work yet, but that could be cool. Um, do I need, am I feedbacking? Okay. <clears throat> so, anyhow, uh, you never know who you might sending, end up sitting next to, uh, who you might end up having a conversation with. And, uh, you know, when I sat down next to Andrea that day, there was no, I had no evil plan or, or thoughts of anything beyond just, you know, having lunch with her. Uh, but you, you do never know where, where uh, things will, uh, what can come out of a conversation. So the, the, we talked about uh, during a session, over lunch, uh, the next place is going to be the beloved hallway track. <coughs> um, so ha ha bleh. the hallway track is what word campers kind of lovingly refer to as all the little asides and conversations that end up happening between sessions in the hallways. Uh, or in the foyer, depending on the venue. Um, but they're typically unplanned. They just kind of happen. They I mean, we're here with, we are with our people. I can't think of anything to say after that, but we are, <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking of like envisioning aliens in my head, like we have found home, people, nerds like us. Um, anyhow, in, uh, let's see, WordCamp Las Vegas, 2013. Um, this is going to sound terrible. I didn't actually care about the word camp. I wanted to go because my friends were going to be there. Uh, I had made uh, friendships at some previous word camps, and I wanted to see these people. My husband thinks it was really bizarre uh, to go to an event just to see people that I've only talked to online. Um, but here we are. Um, and one person in particular that I wanted to hang out with was Rebecca Gill. Uh, if you haven't met Rebecca, she is uh, the, uh, the lady behind Web Savvy Marketing, which is a huge Genesis child themed shop. She does consulting, uh, actually, and, uh, <clears throat> and I, hadn't, I hadn't gotten to meet her yet. I talked with her lots online, but I hadn't actually gotten the opportunity to meet her. So she told me um, in, in Vegas that, uh, excuse me, if I had any questions, I was getting ready to roll out my first Genesis child theme, and she, uh, she told me if I had any questions, wanted to know anything, she was an open book, happy to tell me. And what's funny about that is she's kind of my competitor, uh, technically. I mean, not reality, but I mean, we both do development consulting and are in the Genesis framework space, uh, doing services and providing products for that. Um, 
And that connection in that hallway uh, has led to a tremendous friendship uh, with her, as well as the opportunity to actually work on some um, cool projects. I got to do a, uh, a translation project, go through and make all of her 30 plus themes uh, translation ready and therefore uh, ultimately more accessible. Um, anyhow, that was, that was a total aside. But you never know, uh, your next big idea might happen when you're hanging out in the hallway just having a, a, a conversation. Um, so here's the deal. Lydia, is Lydia in here? Okay, close your ears, Lydia. <laughs> Sessions are awesome, right? But if you get a chance to have a hallway conversation, it's okay to skip a session. Uh, yeah, don't, do, do, I'm, I know, speakers worked hard to prepare them, uh, but it's okay to, uh, to skip a session. You can work, watch it later on WordCamp TV. Um, but yeah, oh, oh, what happened to my computer? Excuse me, this is a technical difficulty. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first time. It would not be the first time. Okay, I probably mashed the wrong button. Okay, so we've talked about um, over lunch, during sessions, uh, in the hallway, um, and by the way, there's a bajillion other times and places. You may have a, a, a connection in the bathroom, which I don't know why I said that. You don't have a connection. <laughs> I hope you don't have a connection in the bathroom. And that made me think of George Michael, which is so inappropriate. Um, <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> the fourth uh, opportunity that you'll have, and uh, Lydia touched on it earlier, is, is down later at the wedge, uh, where the after party will be. And by the way, after parties look nothing like this. It's just a, <laughs> it was just a Creative Commons license or a photo that I was able to use. Uh, WordCamp after parties are actually much more calm. Um, anyhow, after parties are a fantastic, uh, place to uh, kind of carry on the conversations from the day. And your, your mind is going to be blown today. You're going to, it's going to have so many facts going up in there uh, that you'll, I mean, you, I don't know, you're going to need days to digest uh, what you learn at WordCamp. But the after parties are a great way uh, to discuss the things that you've learned uh, in, in a very relaxed atmosphere. So you might have a hamburger in one hand and a cold beverage in another. Uh, and you're amongst friends, so <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good thing. So picking up my, my earlier thread, um, so lunch with Andrea, uh, eventually submitted my speaker app for WordCamp San Francisco, went to WordCamp San Francisco, and I was uh, at the after party, which was actually there in Automatic's <clears throat> headquarters, and there across the crowded room I saw him. It's not my husband. Uh, <laughs> I saw a fellow named Morton Rand Hendrickson. Um, and if you haven't had the chance to stalk Morton online, do it. Um, but he is an instructor at lynda.com. Um, he teaches a ton of WordPress courses. And that's actually how I learned WordPress. Um, I started, I, got, I got, a, got myself a subscription, and got on there and took all these classes from Morton. So he had never met me. Didn't even know my name, uh, but he was Morton, the Norton. So I saw him and I ran up to him and I probably embarrassed myself fangirling just a little bit, um, but hung out, with, and he's so such an unassuming guy, I, I, yeah, I'm sure I scared him, uh, but hung out with him uh, just for, I mean, five minutes or less. Met him, shook his hand, met his wife, um, and then nearly tripped and died at where Camp Asheville. Um, and that was it. <clears throat> and then I went on to, uh, to meet and great and connect with some other people. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop drawing the, this, this story out, but uh, a, a couple months later, Morton got in touch and asked if he could introduce me to the folks at, uh, at lynda.com. Um, and the, the end of that story is now I'm teaching uh, WordPress courses at Lynda uh, alongside Morton. So it, it was a completion of a journey for me um, to end up teaching uh, where I originally learned. Um, and not that, and that, here's the deal, that meeting with Morton, it all threaded backwards uh, and started with uh, sitting down and having lunch with Andrea. 
Um, now, it could have happened. I'm not going to get into esoteric spiritual conversations about our lines, and if we get off the line, it could still happen. Um, but uh, just to, sh to show that you really never know uh, what a connection will lead to. And as a matter of fact, a year from now, uh, you might think back to this room or this camp, and you're like, oh yeah, that's where it started. That's where the such and such happened. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So my challenge to you then is to make the connection, step outside of your comfort zone uh, just a little bit. Are you yawning? Are you yawning during my presentation? <laughs> It's all right. Uh, I, I, I've gone cannonball with, with um, Mendel. It's okay. It's okay. He really sick of a drone on me. Um, anyhow, so my challenge to you is to not leave camp this weekend uh, before you've had the opportunity to make a connection. So, thank you, guys. Thank you.